my, what a difference 10 years makes in the tech industry. At the beginning of last decade, the cloud generally and AWS specifically ushered in the era where leading developers, they tapped into a powerful collection of remote services through programmable interfaces, you know, out there in the cloud. By the end of the decade, this experience would shape the way virtually every IT professional thinks about acquiring, deploying, consuming, and managing technology. Today, that remote cloud is becoming ubiquitous, expanding to the edge with connections to on-premises data centers and other local points throughout the globe. One of the most talked about examples of this movement is AWS Outposts, which brings the Amazon experience to the edge, wherever that may be. Welcome everyone to this CUBE conversation. My name is Dave Vellante. We're going to explore the ever expanding cloud and how two companies are delivering on customer needs to connect their data center operations to the cloud and the cloud to their on-prem infrastructure and applications. And with me are Joshua Burgeon, who's the general manager of AWS Outposts and Michael Sotnik, who's the VP in global alliances at Pure Storage. Gents, welcome. Come inside the cube. Right on. Well, thrilled to be here, Dave. Great. As great am I, you guys. thank you. Awesome to have this conversation with you. It's really our pleasure. So let's, uh, Joshua, let's start with, with Outposts. Maybe you could, for the audience, describe what it is, maybe some of the use cases that you're seeing. You heard my narrative up front. Maybe you could course correct anything I missed. Oh, sure. I mean, I think you got it right on. AWS uh, Outpost is a fully managed service that allows you to use AWS uh, API systems, tools, technology, hardware, software innovation in your own data center or co-location facility. And coming later this year, as you put the edge in quotes, at almost any edge site, as we announced the small form factor 1U and 2U outposts at this last year's reInvent. I was excited when I saw Outposts a couple years ago, we were doing the cube at reInvent and I said, wow, this is really going to be interesting. And I'm wondering like, how's Amazon? How are they going to partner? Where does some of the ecosystem get folks fit in? And so Michael, you're an AWS Outpost ready partner. You know, what is that program all about? What does that mean for customers? Yeah, it, it's, a, uh, it's a great question. And, you know, like you, Dave, I think we're, um, we, as a vendor in technology, we're inspired by what AWS has done. And when we look at Pure and, and see the opportunity we have, you know, shared customer obsession, focused on outcomes, focused on MPS, great customer experience, seeing AWS deliver the cloud to the edge, deliver the cloud to the data center, um, that was just a great fit for us. So we rallied internally across our flash array, our block storage solution, our unified fast file and object block, uh, excuse me, our unified fast file and object flash blade solution and our container solution port works. And, you know, across the entire portfolio, we're the first to be uh, in our segment, the first to be service ready with AWS outposts. And to us, it's an opportunity to link arms with AWS and, you know, cover some ground that's very familiar to us in the data center and, you know, clearly cover some ground that's very familiar to AWS in terms of great customer relationships, you know, across the board. Right, and, and you know, I got to say, I, I've been a student of, of Andy Jassy's. I always have listened to all his talks. I go back and read the transcripts and Joshua, I've learned that I never say never when it comes to, to AWS. And, and you, you see you guys moving into that whatever you call it, the hybrid cloud, the on-premises, really leaning in in a big way with, with outposts. And I wonder if you could talk about what's behind that expansion strategy. Sure, I mean, the, the way we looked at it, obviously is always kind of working backwards from our customers. We had people tell us that they had some applications with low latency needs or where data residency or sovereignty was driven by regulations, or in some cases where they needed to do local data processing, something like an autonomous vehicle workload or in a factory or a healthcare facility. And they really wanted to say like, look, we're going to move all of our applications, you know, the bulk of them to one of your regions in the fullness of time. But what's holding us back is that we want a consistent environment on-prem and in what you called the cloud. So we wanted a continuum of offerings from AWS to be able to serve all those needs. And that's really where Outpost came from. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of traction across financial services with companies like Morningstar and uh, First Abu Dhabi Bank, the iGaming space, as you can imagine, highly regulated industry. Every uh, city and you know, municipality around the world wants to get in on that, but they have their own regulations and they really require the infrastructure to be in a specific location and run a certain way. 
company like Typico, which is based out of Europe, they don't want to deliver different solutions depending on whether something's deployed in Minnesota or Germany or you know Vancouver. So that's where AWS Outpost comes in, and it kind of fits that it kind of that it works the same way as the things do in the region. They can use the same tooling. Yeah. So Michael, I'm going to ask you this question, and maybe Joshua, you can you can chime in as well. I mean, you've got this, it's sort of a win-win-win, you know, pure AWS, you're bringing that experience to uh, on-premises, the customer gets that experience that Joshua just uh, uh, explained. I wonder if you could, I mean, you've been out now for a little bit, testing the market, learning here and there. What are the big takeaways and the, in the, in the learnings you're getting from, from customers? Uh, yeah, I'll start and, uh, and, and I'm sure Joshua can, can compliment quite a bit. And, and like Joshua hit on, right? You know, I think we take our cues from our customers, Dave. And you know, what the customers are looking for, you know, is a commercial relationship. And so, you know, in addition to the technological inspiration we've got from AWS, uh, we offer the um, solution for Outposts in a pure as a service model. So it's a hundred percent, you know, subscription based for the customer, and they're able to consume it, you know, the same way that they would all of their services from AWS, including Outpost. And it's also available on the AWS marketplace. So we've got to, you've got to meet the customer where they want to be met first and foremost. And so they appreciate that. And they see that as, as a great value in the relationship. Um, you know, the, the growth of object, you know, I think is, is another one of those macro trends that's happening in our space. And, you know, as customers are deploying locations that are putting out, you know, you know, petabytes of object um, storage requirements, there's an increasing need for high performance object. And that's where we can really complement an outpost implementation and deliver high performance and that kind of ubiquitous experience that, that hybrid experience to allow the customer on a policy based way to maximize that on-prem performance with outpost and pure around that object data set. And then also, you know, manage, you know, the life cycle of that data and the economics of that data in the cloud. So, but Joshua, so you guys have obviously invented that, that you know, the modern subscription model for infrastructure, but, it, but it's different. You're actually installing hardware. So you had to right. sort of rethink how you did that. What, what have you learned and how, how is that model? How do you get it as substantially similar as possible to the public cloud? Yeah, I mean, I think you, you called it a win-win-win earlier. And, you know, I, as much as we like to innovate, we also like to make things feel kind of comfortable and familiar to people. Because you think about there's both the developer who's, you know, using the APIs and the tools, and also the CFO and the people in finance or procurement who are looking at the spending. So with Outposts, it actually feels very similar to the region. If you're used to purchasing our compute savings plans or what people used to call reserved instances or RIs, the underlying infrastructure on the outpost works a very similar way. You're not going to be deploying a multi-rack outpost and then ripping it out three weeks later. So on-demand doesn't really make sense there. But for all the services that are deployed on top of outposts, whether it's our uh, application load balancer or Elastic Cache or Elastic MapReduce, those have the same kind of on-demand service model, the pricing model that they do in the region. And so very similarly, the Outpost Ready program, which lets you use trusted and certified third-party solutions, such as ones from Pure, those are also going to feel familiar, whether you're coming from the on-prem world and you're already using that technology for your storage, your network monitoring, your security, or if you're using that solution from the marketplace in the AWS region, it's going to be a totally seamless deploy on the Outpost. So you're going to get something that's kind of the best of both worlds, you know, familiar to you economically and from an installation perspective but also removing all that undifferentiated heavy lifting of having to patch and manage firmware upgrades. And you asked this earlier, what customers really want is that there's this whole world of innovation, things that haven't even been invented yet. A few years ago, we hadn't invented outposts. People want to know that as those innovations get released to the market, they can take advantage of them without having to redeploy. And so that's what having an AWS outpost means. As third parties or Amazon innovates, new services can be made available without shipping a DVD or kind of spinning up an entire staff to manage that. Yeah, it's kind of interesting watching this equilibrium, you know, take place. And I think it's going to continue to evolve. Uh, obviously AWS has a huge impact on how people think about and price, as I said up front. 
And it seems like, you know, culturally, Michael, there's a fit. I mean, you guys have always sort of been into that, you know, your evergreen model, you know, for the first with that subscription sort of mindset. So, so it's, it's sort of natural for, for you, whereas, you know, maybe a, 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 a legacy company might not <laughs> be able to lean in as hard as you guys are. Maybe some quick thoughts on that. Yeah, look, I love the way you frame that up and, and couldn't agree more. You know, I think um, AWS is famous for a lot of things, you know, some of the values that they embrace and, and putting the customer at the center of everything they do um, couldn't be more shared, you know, with Pure. I think, you know, we, we talk about our company as one that runs two fires, right? To, to give the customer a great experience. And so, you know, we know our way around the data center and, and I think the opportunity to give that customer, you know, a consistent experience with, you know, AWS as they deliver outposts to the data center is a really powerful combination. You know, I think one thing, if we just look at the backdrop of the pandemic, Dave, you know, the, the, every part of a company's organization is going through significant change. And I think the data center is, you know, absolutely at the center of some of those changes. And I think everyone now, as they look at the next generation data center, they're they're asking themselves, you know, what what are containers? What does Kubernetes mean, you know, to 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 my business? And I think the opportunity that you know we see jointly with EKS, you know, as as a partner, is really to help customer help customers, you know, achieve that goal of you know the application deployments anywhere and the ability to drive that application, you know, modernize that next generation application cycle. So I love the way you framed it up, giving us credit, you know, for being highly differentiated, you know, from our legacy competitors. And we take great pride in that and, and really want to give a cloud-like experience to our customers. And I think what we're able to do with AWS and Outpost is kind of bring that cloud-like experience that they have come to love from AWS into the data center and at the same time, shine a light on what we've always done in terms of a cloud-like experience for the pure customer. I mean, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, but when you've invented the cloud and you don't have a lot of legacy baggage, you can kind of move faster. And, and I think that, you know, we're really excited about what's occurring here because you take, take the term digital transformation. I mean, before the pandemic, yeah, it's like, yeah, okay, it had some meaning, but you really had to squint through it. And a lot of people were complacent about it. Well, we know what digital means now. If you're not a digital business, you're out of business. And so, because it's kind of this forced march to digital, I, I call it. And, and, and as a result, it really increases the need for things like automation and that cloud experience on-prem because I don't have time to be provisioning LUNs anymore. It's just, you know, what you guys call undifferentiated heavy lifting. That is really a no-no these days. I just absolutely can't afford it. Let's close on what's next. I mean, we got new form factors coming. We're like super excited about when we see things like what Amazon is doing with with, with custom silicon, we see these innovations coming out with processing power going through the roof. Everybody says Moore's law is dead, but processing power is increasing faster than it ever has when you combine all these innovations of GPUs and NPUs and accelerators. It's just, it's amazing and the costs are coming down. So you're going to be able to take advantage of that. Outposts will take advantage of that, pure will, new designs, but specifically as it relates to outposts, you got one U, you got two U, U coming, mm -hmm. optimizing for the edge. What do customers need to know about, about these solutions? Why should they consider this combination of Pure and, and AWS? Maybe Joshua, you can start and Michael, you can bring us home. Yeah, I mean, you, you hit a lot of the reasons that people should consider it, right? The pace of innovation is not going to slow down here at AWS or of course with Pure. Whether you have uh, the need for a single server or you're somebody like Dish rolling out a new cloud enabled, you know, cloud native 5G network, you're going to be used that you want to work with somebody who can deploy all the way at the telco edge, right? With hardware innovation back to a local zone, all the way up to a region. You don't want to be working with different providers for that. And you don't know what you're going to need in three or five years. And frankly, I'm not sure that we know everything yet either, but we're going to continue to listen to our customers. And as you mentioned, deliver things like Graviton and Inferentia and Tranium, which are our innovations in custom Silicon. Those are delivering 40% price performance improvements for people who are migrating. That, that's really an enormous benefit. And we're bringing all of those to the outpost as well. So you don't have to choose between moving to the cloud and that being your only modernization option. You can move to the cloud and at the same time still operate on-prem, you know, at a colo facility or all the way at the edge using all of the same tooling. And you can work with best in breed 
third-party technologies like what's offered by Pure. Well, and Michael, I'm going to cut you off before you get a chance to close, but I'll let you close. The, the Portworks acquisition was really interesting to us because it, you know, it brings that kind of portability, new programming model. And something that Joshua said struck in my mind is when I think about the edge, what, to me, what's going to win the edge, you, you know, obviously the flexibility, the agility, but the programmability and the customization, so many different use cases. We're not just going to take general purpose boxes and throw them over the fence and say, here you go. You know, the, the, the general purpose of that's not what's going to win the edge. It's, it's really going to take a lot more thought than that. But so I just wanted to put that in there. Michael, bring us home, please. <laughs> right on. Well, look, you two, uh, and no surprise here, right? You two covered so much great ground there. From first principles, you know, what, what, have, what does Pure look at? Like what we did being first in terms of service ready across port works, you know, for EKS for flash blade across unified fast file and object and flash array, you know, for block storage being first with outpost, we want to be first for the one U and two U solutions. So I think customers can expect, you know, that our partnership is going to continue to deliver that cloud-like experience that cloud experience in the AWS context, that cloud-like experience in the pure context, you know, for their on-prem and hybrid workloads. And, you know, I think you hit it up so well, like if you're not a digital business, you're not in business. And so I think and one thing that everyone learned over the last year is exactly that. The other thing they learned is they don't know what they don't know. And so they need to make bets on partners that are modern, that are delivering simple, you know, simple solutions, you know, that solve complex problems that are automated and that, you know, are, are being delivered with a customer first um, mindset. And I think in the combination of, you know, AWS, Outposts and Pure, we're doing exactly that. Great points, a lot of unknowns out there. Hey guys, congratulations on the progress you've made. It's a great partnership, two super innovative companies and really a pleasure to have you on theCUBE. Thank you for coming on. Thank you always for having us. Pleasure. Yeah, always a pleasure, thank you so much. All right, and thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante, we'll see you next time. <laughs>